Chapter 3. Date, February 21st, 2005. Place, 200 feet above the Iranian desert. Time, 0300 hours, local. The two MiG-23s were cruising low and fast, just above the surface. The pilots at the controls were intimately familiar with their machines, having dedicated the past three months to perfecting this specific maneuver. The aircraft were armed with 500-pound general-purpose bombs. They carried the responsibility of delivering these weapons in the name of Iran, striking back against the imperialist aggressors who had invaded Saudi Arabia and Iraq. The strategy was straightforward. Intelligence indicated that the Americans were neglecting combat air patrols in this sector. Instead, the unreliable Saudi forces were tasked with the patrol duties. The timing of the attack had been meticulously chosen to maximize the embarrassment afflicted upon their western cousins. This operation would serve as a clear message to the American president. If the Saudi F-15s couldn't thwart an attack on Allied headquarters, surely this would create a substantial schism within the hastily formed coalition. The plan was destined to be a resounding success. The lead MiG pilot pushed the throttles forward, giving the engines more power, all the while monitoring his radar warning receiver that remained eerily silent. A perfect scenario, undetected still, and now crossing the border. Just another 20 minutes and he and his wingman would strike a resounding blow for their fallen comrades, for all the injustices inflicted by the Americans on their people. This would be the bombing that resonated across the globe. 0305 hours local, aboard Central Sector AWACS, call sign Dark Star. This is Dark Star 01. Contact, single group, bullseye 180 for 100, south, low, fast. The advisory call on the main net from the large 707 aircraft in orbit 27,000 feet over the Saudi desert. The code words were issued by the weapons controller at the radar scope and were broadcast to all players on the frequency. It meant that he had a single contact group of an indeterminate number on his radar scope. The next call placed the group with the reference to a geographic point that was changed daily, bullseye. The last three words were a description of the target's track, speed, and altitude. Now that the contact had been confirmed, it was up to the senior controller to decide what to do. The senior controller had to alert the commanders of what was going on, just to ensure that they actually were seeing this transpire on the new system that had just been installed in Riyadh the week before. He keyed his mic for his tied-in network on the communication link. Big Gun, Dark Star, copy the group. Dark Star, Big Gun, Roger, same contact. Big Gun advises weapons tight. Say again, weapons tight. Do not commit assets at this time. Over. The controller in the command room glanced nervously over his shoulder at the general in charge of the situation room. His last call had advised the airborne warning aircraft that they were not to target any of the airborne fighter assets to counteract the threat. This was very unusual. In normal circumstances, a group of two or four fighters from the combat air patrols on station would be dispatched to deal with the speedy threat. The general nodded and shot a similar glance at the civilian next to him. The civilian was preoccupied with listening to a small headset that he had on. He advised the person on the other end, Roger, and then turned to the general. General, our system is functioning. Continue as briefed. The general delivered a brisk nod and reverted his focus to the situation board. The MiGs were a mere 300 miles north of the headquarters position, hurtling south along the ground. Alongside the MiGs' flight path, F-15s maintained their rotating combat air patrols, circling ceaselessly in their designated orbits. Yet not one of these F-15 Eagles made the slightest movement toward intercepting the approaching MiGs. Unbeknownst to the Iranian intelligence, these were not Saudi F-15s on patrol. Rather, they were the American adversaries whom the Iranian pilots held in profound disdain. The F-15 pilots were well aware of the impending danger. Within each Eagle cockpit, the pilots had heard Dark Star's broadcast. Over the past ten minutes or so, each pilot had glimpsed the blips on their own radar screens and had been closely monitoring the data link feed from all the synchronized systems. However, despite this awareness, they collectively refrained from locking on to the contacts that they all recognized were advancing southward toward the headquarters. What in the world was happening tonight? Perhaps some brass-induced scheme to secure easy kills for a particular individual. If they wanted to engage in games, so be it. Fortunately, they had opted to serve as their own bait and no one else's. The two MiGs executed their final turn at the designated point some 200 miles to the north of the intended target. With their course set, the final approach was imminent. 
Deep in the bunker, the civilian touched the general on the shoulder. The general simply nodded. The civilian spoke simply one word and then waited. Action. On dozens of radar scopes, the situation played out in front of unbelieving eyes. No fighters had been committed to the targets. The two blips just suddenly disappeared. The air weapons controller on the AWACS, the others on the situation room, and the fighter pilots all saw the same thing at the same time. There could only be one explanation. The MiGs had driven themselves into the deck. Night low level could be a tricky thing, especially if you didn't get to practice it often. The same thought played out in 40 different minds. That must be what happened. Dark Star 01. Lost contact. Bogies. Last look. South Bowl. 400. Low. Fast. Then the call came from one of Eagle Leads. Red Dog 21. Same. In the command room, the civilian leaned in and spoke softly to the general. Upon receiving the message, the general redirected his attention to the controller stationed at the front of the room. Instruct Slash 2. Conclude the exercise, the general directed. Turning to the radar controller, he ordered the transmission that conveyed the downing of the two MiGs. The specifics of how the MiGs had been neutralized remain undisclosed on this particular night. He understood that certain pilots might harbor inquiries, yet he also recognized that they would exercise discretion. Breaching top-secret boundaries could profoundly impact careers. Roger, sir. This is Big Gun. Splash 2. I say again, Splash 2. Terminate. This is Big Gun. Out. The system worked.